Welcome to the last afternoon of KubeCon. Somehow they always schedule my KubeCon talk, you know, in the last day. But you know, that's. Uh, but uh, I'm very excited to uh, to present here. Um, you know, um, I'll let you say, um, introduce ourselves later. You know, but the, the the title of the talk is eBPF plus Wasm, and I'm sure you have all heard of eBPF or Wasm, right? You know, Wasm is. Uh, next generation isolation format. It's small, it's light, it's fast. It can work together with containers. And eBPF sort of works in the parallel universe. It's, uh, it provides observability for container workloads. It can also be deployed by containers and all that. So how are those linked together? You know, what are the benefits of linking those two, um, you know, largely separate bytecode format, one in the kernel, one in the user space? So that's, um, you know, um, the topic we're going to discuss today, we're going to give you um, uh, a new open source project. On, it's, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's a new open source project because it has been under development for over a year, but uh, a, a, new, a new project that allows us to provide a better way to manage eBPF agent and provide a better way to validate and secure eBPF agent through using Wasm. And also by um, having a, a user space agent running in the Wasm, that's provide data, data analytics capabilities for the eBPF agent. So, you know, that I, you know that's, um, I'm very excited to, uh, to pre present this to you. And uh, uh, my name is Michael Yuan, and I'm the WASM in this talk. So I'm the um, uh, uh, founder of CNCF's project called WASM Edge. So it's a WebAssembly runtime that, that's in the CNCF sandbox. And uh, please. Uh, my name is Yixuan Zheng, currently managed maintaining a small community called Enormia BPF and make, try to make the BPF easy to deploy or use and exploring some new technologies uh, with the web same BPF runtime or tool chains. Okay. Thank you, Yushai. So, so I'll start and uh, um, to have an overview or agenda of what we're going to talk about in the next um, half an hour, right? You know, so first we have a very light introduction of eBPF and Wasm, which I'm sure you know most of you guys um, know at least one of them, and probably both, right? And uh, um, then we're going to dive into the topic of how Wasm improves eBPF developer experience. But it's all about developer experience. So you know, um, so we're going to go through the topics such as non-intrusive deployment into Kubernetes pod using Wasm to deploy eBPF agents, and the decoupled from application workloads. Declarative security checks at deployment times using a Wasm application to check the security of the eBPF application. And then, more, more interesting, support user space eBPF, meaning there's uh, you know, uh, eBPF like applications that does not need access to the kernel, hence, does not need access to the privileged user. You can use it in the user space to monitor things like network traffic and you know, things like that. And uh, um, downstream an analytics of the eBPF data, you know, that's another, you know, when, when, GB, when the agent collects data, it goes feedback into some analytics tools and, and Wasm provide a way to do the transformation of the data and, uh, um, you know, uh, analytics of data and, and, and allow, and, you know, it data to be pushed to, to um, downstream, you know, analytics tools, you know. So, and then the, um, that will be the bulk of the talk. But then um, perhaps the last uh, five, 10 minutes, we're gonna talk about how e the other way around, how eBPF improves Wasm developer experience. I know there's um, you know, uh, quite a few um, uh, WebAssembly developers here, and one of the biggest challenges WebAssembly has, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, we talked about at uh, Wasm Day at the beginning of the KubeCon, you know, is, uh, um, you know, um, is, you know, is a way to guarantee security for Wasm application because Wasm provides isolation formats that's similar to VMs and containers, right? Is a way to guarantee security um, and um, policies uh, for Wasm applications. And then the second is how do we enable better debugging and better tracing for Wasm applications? And we believe uh, eBPF agents embedded into the Wasm application, especially embedded into the Wasm system interface, WASI would, uh, would provide a very good, um, you know, um, potential solution for those problems that we encounter at the bottom side as well. So those are, uh, so this is a quick agenda. And uh, um, so here's a brief introduction of eBPF. I'm sure, you know, most of you guys, um, you know, being this being KubeCon, you already knew that, probably has already using, using that. So, you know, so there's um, use cases where then you develop applications, you develop using tools and de uh, both development tools and deployment tools 
uh, in the user space to develop eBPF agents, and then you deploy those agents to the kernel, and then it's, um, you know, start to, um, you know, do its work in the kernel, doing monitoring, security enforcement, and, you know, things like that. And then the data comes back, and then you can analyze the data, right? You know, so that's the general, um, you know, very high-level overview of, uh, you know, how, how eBPF is being used today. And uh, then on the other side, uh, on Wasm side, you know, uh, eBPF is an uh, agent you deploy, m uh, mostly commonly deploy into the Linux kernel. The Wasm is almost exclusively runs on the user space, and it's, it's, uh, it tries to run, um, you know, uh, business logic, you know, like database, com uh, database workload and uh, application workload and, you know, things like that. What we typically know as microservices, however, you know, and the chief benefit of Wasm is a lot smaller than a container-based uh, solution. So if you have a, a, a you know, container application that is, you know, connects to a database and uh, um, turns a database result into some kind of web page, you, know, uh, you could easily look at you know, 100 megabytes, 200 megabytes of container size. But uh, uh, for Wasm, you are looking at one megabytes or two megabytes, right? You know, it's a, it's a um, 100 times saving in terms of space. And it's also, um, you know, that's especially pronounced when you have computing intensive environments, for instance. You know, um, we've seen a lot of Wasm applications that use the um, uh, AIML pipelines, you know, uh, replacing Python essentially. You know, that's, uh, so, so instead of uh, having, uh, you know, three gigabytes PyTorch, uh, you know, container image, you would have, uh, you would have a Wasm application that is only 10 megabytes, 20 megabytes, and you would be able to run you know, um, a large variety of, you know, say, PyTorch models or, you know, uh, even large language models like Llama, you know, things like that. So, you know, so from the surface, there are very different technologies. You know, one is, um, you know, um, uh, deep embedded into the infrastructure and uh, um, to provide um, mostly ops. And uh, uh, on the bottom side, it's, uh, it's user space technology that is, um, handles business logic and application logic. So how do they connect together then? Okay, let me, okay. So let's get to the first topic. So I'll, you know, um, provide a high-level overview first, and then you will do the demo. Okay, yeah. So you know, so how, so that's the first big section. How Wasm improves the eBPF developer experience. Okay. So um, to answer that question, we have to look at how eBPF is deployed today. So there's two major ways of deploying eBPF today. So one of them is, uh, is tightly integrated into a control, a control plane. So it's bundled into a, a larger application. So you have, you know, um, um, you know, different frameworks that you can do that, Selenium and Pixie and, you know, things like that. And then there's another way, which is uh, 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 what we call de decoupled or more like a sidecar eBPF deployment where you have, um, you, uh, eBPF runs its own, its own process and uh, communicate with the uh, other applications running on this, uh, on this host to rocket, sockets, right? You know, so you have um, a two chains like uh, Bumblebee and, you know, things like that, eBPFD. Um, so those are the two um, um, uh, most popular eBPF deployment methods today. So the problem, the issue with the integrated deployment, however, um, I think the biggest issue is uh, securities, you know, because regardless what you want to do, eBPF has to be deployed in the kernel, so you have to give it a very broad set of permissions and, uh, um, and, and uh, you know, uh, authorization, essentially, have, it has to run uh, as a super user. That creates its own set of, you know, um, uh, you know um, um, a policy and uh, security and, and those issues, right? And also, there's uh, the eBPF program is typically very small, but you sort of need a very large framework just to deploy it, you know, so it's, uh, it is uh, not very efficient, especially, you know, if you talk about cases like in the edge cloud, you know, things, um, uh, things of that nature, right? So then there's um, the other part of the integrated development, the, the other problem of the integrated development is on the, is on the, um, is on the development side because that's what's, um, you know, so it, it, it is also um, somewhat difficult because there's new framework involved and, you know, things like that. It's some, uh, somewhat more difficult to develop those eBPF applications. So then that leads to um, people exploring the other deployment model, that's a decoupled deployment model, right? So instead of having a large framework that, that manages all the eBPF, um, you know, uh, agents and modules, you can have a, a, a decoupled setup, you know, so meaning that you run a separate process on your uh, host machine that, um, th that used to manage and deploy eBPF applications. That's, that, uh, that's a process you can communicate with the rest of the containers in the, uh, in the host can, can communicate with that 
with that process through sockets, right? You know, so that's give rise to, you know, um, through sockets and RPCs and, you know, things like that. That give rise to, you know, um, um, like we mentioned, a project like Bumblebee and the BPFD and, you know, things like that. But they also have somewhat challenges, you know, because those are a separate piece of software that you have to uh, maintain that is outside of your main application workloads. It's not integrated by definition, right? So you have to have a separate way to maintain updates and, uh, um, and patch any problems that's, that's, um, that the community may have discovered with those. So it's, uh, it, it, is, uh, um, it requires more work, you know? So that's the second way, you know, that's uh, the, the decoupled EPPF de deployment. So the, the solution that we want to present in this open source project is WASM plus EBPF. That's really, uh, um, you know, our goal is to have best of both worlds. You know, so we have a, instead of having a Linux container that deploys the EBPF agent, we use the WASM application, or we call the WASM container, to deploy EBPF applications. And uh, um, because, you know, we had a, um, um, Announcement in uh, last year, KubeCon, you know, in, in Detroit with uh, with Docker, um, to to show that uh, um, the Wasm application can run side by side with container applications in the Docker in Docker Compose and Docker setup. And since then, a lot of development, you know, uh, there has been a lot of development to make Wasm a full a first class citizen in the Kubernetes cluster, right? You know, so in a Kubernetes cluster, you cannot, you know, you can have virtual machines now, you can have, you know, container, and then you can also have uh, Wasm applications that run side by side. So from the Kubernetes point of view, those Wasm applications behave like they are containers, but they are just Wasm applications. So their sandboxing is very different than the, than the regular container, right? So the benefit of those is that they are much lighter and much easier to manage. So that's um, the, the feature we want to take advantage of is to, you know, um, is to have the, the, the eBPF agent um, embedded in the Wasm application and being deployed by the Wasm application and have their data communicated back to the Wasm application instead of uh, 100 megabytes, 200 megabytes container that does this work. We want a very small one megabytes, two megabytes, couple megabytes, um, you know, um, lightweight Wasm application to do this work, right? So I think, oh yeah, that's, um, I think that's, that's the same thing, right? <laughs> you know? So, this is a project, you know, so the, the um, you know, you can find that on, on GitHub, you know, that's, uh, but I think, you know, um, perhaps more interestingly, we, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a demo, right? So, oh, perhaps we could do that, and uh, you could do the demo first, and I, I'll go back to talk about other things. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, my computer is, uh, has some issues, so I didn't prepare a full demo here, so I just make some GIF. This is a simple GIF or video demo of how to use a container tools like a Podman to run WebAssembly and eBPF. As it shows, uh, we can use a Podman container to start and run eBPF program in WebAssembly, which you can trace the run queue latency. It's a schedule in Linux as a histogram for the new system. This program is pulled from the BCC tools and compared in WebAssembly with our tool chains. Uh, you can fetch data from BPF hash maps in a kernel, do some post processing in user space, and then print the result to the console. Uh, the EVPF program is integrated into user space WebAssembly application which can be packed into an OCI image and study as a container with the WASM each runtime. We can also list the existing Podman WebAssembly containers and see the container we just studied uh, and like use the Podman to list it and kill it. Uh, Let's go to the development experience. Uh, Live BPF is a widely used framework for developing eBPF programs in C and C++. This uh, development experience in WebAssembly is similar to that of Live BPF Bootstrap, including automatically generated skeleton BPF code framework and type definitions, just like the BPF tool and Live BPF Bootstrap does. Rise right, the auto -gen 
auto-generated skeleton from our WebAssembly BPF tool. Left part is the use space code of load and attaching the kernel eBPF program. It was written in C, which can be compiled into WebAssembly. Here are some basic examples. Let's take a moment to walk through it. Uh, first, we have like a U probe in observability and tracing. This is like setting up a watchtower inside your applications. Let you keep an eye on how functions are running without modifi like modifying them. And this is the tracing part. And uh, XBB is for networking. This can be used to process process packets at the low, lowest level before it reaches the network stack in the kernel, allowing to you to, to filter, redirect, or draw packets as you need. And then we may have a LSM for security. This can allow you to set rules on what the system can and cannot do, like blowing a process from accessing a file or some network port in the kernel. Uh, let's take a look at uh, how WebAssembly works. This project essentially wants to treat the WASM sandbox as a, a native use this runtime space on top of the OS, which means we can use WebAssembly to develop and deploy eBPI programs as ordinary eBPI programs, but with the adding benefit of security and ease of moving from one system and another. In runtime, a WebAssembly model can manage multiple eBPI programs and allow dynamically load eBPI programs from WebAssembly sandbox into a kernel, set the desired events like the UProb and KProb trace points to attach to and un unattach them, control a complete life cycle of multiple eBPI objects and support most eBPI program times. It can also communicate Communication is like a two-way street with WebAssembly and eBPF. It's set up path to back and forth conversation with the kernel use eBPF maps like a ring buffer or perf event. The eBPF can send messages from the kernel state to use this via ring buffer and perf event or assess hash maps from the WebAssembly virtual machines. They can also like share memory between kernel and WebAssembly runtime. Now let's move on how we can create eBPF applications with WASM BPF. This, this is called a tool chance. Uh, to develop an eBPF program, we first need to compile the corresponding source code into BPF objects like the BPF O using a client or LLVM tool chain, which contains the BPF bytecode and the corresponding data structure definitions maps and program definitions in the BTF format. This is where the BTF works. It's inside the BTF DNO. Then we can use BTF info to generate skeleton and bindings for your space program development. This approach is similar to the component models in WebAssembly, in which we can use the label like a with WIT and another to generate bindings in C, Rust, and Go. Then we can develop US-based programs in this language and compile and pack them to a WebAssembly model. With the support of BTF and code generation, uh, all communications between the kernel eBPF and US-based WebAssembly do not need to go through serialization and deserialization mechanism. At the same time, the eBPF development experience is just like a BPF tool and live BPF bootstrap does. Uh, we can compare and WebAssembly and eBPF models, which is typically like the uh, BC tools, like 100 kbits. And they can be dynamically loaded and executed in kernel like uh, 100 million seconds. Uh, it's, it's optimized for rapid development and institutions. We have overcome some challenges before we can fully use eBPF capability within WebAssembly or Kubernetes. Uh, first, we have got some libraries we, for C, CPP, Rust, and Go, each enabling eBPF interactions in their respective languages. Uh, so they are for Rust, Java, and Go. Um, 
we need to like transfer this library to the WebAssembly version to invariably enabling develop EBPI programs in this language with WebAssembly. And also another challenge is the data layout. The WebAssembly is like 32 bits and EBPF is like 64 bits. The data layout is different. So we use a tool chance to generate bindings and avoid serializations between them. Uh, the last trend is the kernel compatibility. Uh, the EBPF requires the kernel versions to support. You may use like uh, compare ones and run everywhere technology to enhance the portability of EBPF programs between kernel versions. Uh, and we can also look at some use based EBPF runtime for optional or compatible layers for different kernel versions, like we can um, for a ring buffer and perf event. Uh, this is what the use space EBPF does. Uh, we are also examining, uh, this is a new project, uh, new, we are also examining a new development in system of stability with integration, the combining of WebAssembly and with user space EBPF runtimes. <laughs> WebAssembly with kernel EBPF unlock a lot of potentials, allow us to engage deeply with the Linux kernel. However, it does not come with the need of specific kernel versions, um, like a high kernel versions to support EBPF and a privilege to load the EBPF into the kernel. The kernel also needs to configure and enable the EBPF runtime. Enter BPF time, our new approach to EBPF like operate entirely in, in your space. I mean, we can deploy existing EBPF tracing programs uh, without special permissions and without depending on Linux kernel version, uh, even no limit to Linux system. BPF time may allow us to use eBPF tools with like uprop and sysdot trace points to monitor the, and tracing applications in user space. These tools are lightweight and don't require like stopping and compare the eBPF applications with eBPF runtime. Uprop are like the your space counterparts to KProp. This is the Uprop does. It's inside a kernel application, which allows us to trace user based functions in EBPF. The kernel also sp supports Uprop. However, the kernel Uprop is slow due to the overhead of context switching between kernel and user space. We have time to solve this problem by running entirely in user space with the add and the advantage of being up to 10 times faster than kernel your problem. Plus, BPF time plays nicely with existing BPF tool trends. It supports inter-process eBPF maps in your space or interacting with kernel eBPF maps. And you can run family tools like BCC and BPF trace entirely in your space without any change to their code. So we are looking maybe a more flexible way to get the inside and manage systems and also exploring potential integrating with technologies like DPDK and network tests with user space eBPF. It's a step forward in making the powerful system tools more accessible and efficient. So let's come to my call. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, if I may summarize the point, you know, so um, before we move on to the next topic is that, so why do you use WASM to deploy eBPF? You know, three things, faster, easier, and safer, okay? Uh, faster also means smaller because instead of using a container that is hundreds of megabytes, use WASM, which is only less than 10 megabytes of the entire, so quote unquote, container to deploy the, the, the eBPF application. You know, that's faster and smaller. And easier is that because the eBPF is now embedded in the WASM, so now you can manage eBPF applications like OCI artifact because, uh, you know, uh, because WASM applications can be stored directly in, uh, in, uh, in OCI registry and be managed by Kubernetes and Docker and such, right? You know, so um, with that, you can have eBPF applications embedded in one. So you, essentially, you can have OCI registry to manage eBPF application as well. And uh, 
I also know there's work, a lot of work about WASM registry, you know, like uh, in component model and such, you know. So, you know, uh, that would also allow eBPF applications to be managed in those repository being version and be managed there as well. So this is easier. And also that allows, um, especially with the user space eBPF, that allows you to uh, develop single applications uh, embedded in WASM that's, uh, that is, um, that's um, you know, um, portable across different uh, diff kernels and also user space because the kernel eBPF is, uh, there's some, um, you know, it's strongly tied towards kernel versions, you know, so there's, uh, the, the portability is, uh, is somewhat limited. However, if you just want the eBPF to monitor, say, network traffic and, you know, things like that, uh, things that happen in the user space, you can have a lot better portability by, you know, uh, having those eBPF applications that are embedded in WASM, right? And then safer, you know, that's also the user space eBPF does not require um, uh, kernel privileges, so you can deploy it as a user space, in the, as a user space application, so that makes it safer uh, out of the gate, right? And also, because the eBPF is managed by, is deployed by WASM, so you can have WASM security models that are applied to the eBPF stuff, right? You know, so, because WASM has a, a um, you know, what, what they call capability-based security, so, you know, so all the um, operating system access uh, to the WASM runtime has to be declared and configured, so you can have um, you know, um, a, very, um, a very declarative and a very uh, specific set of uh, security policies of what this WASM application is allowed to do and not allowed to do in terms of deploying eBPF. And uh, you can also, um, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, that, that um, I think that's enough benefits, right? You know, that's, uh, you, you know, there's uh, uh, faster, easier, and safer, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, that's why you need to, um, you, you know, um, I highly encourage you guys to, to try it out, especially if you already use eBPF today. You know, you, um, you know, instead of deploying from a container, deploy it from WASM. You know, that's, uh, um, it, um, I think, you know, it's, uh, um, it, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's a better way, but it is a better way. You know, it's a better way to do this. You know, that, so um, I have five minutes left, so, you know, I'll go really quick about, um, because I think most of you guys care about eBPF, less about WASM. So, uh, but I, I also want to talk about because um, you know uh, because we, uh, we have a WASM runtime, so so we, so so I want to show how eBPF in turn improves the WASM developer experience, right? You know, so uh, this is a uh, this is a survey the WebAssembly community has conducted last year, to, um, you know, to talk about what's the you know the need in the WebAssembly ecosystem. You know, if I people want to write microservices, run embedded functions, you know, whatever in WASM. What do they need? You know, so um, the, there's a very pressing need for better debugging tools because right now, you know, without debugging tools, um, a WASM would al always be more or less like a toy, you know, because, you know, you only find out problems when you, once you deploy it, right, you know. So um, this is actually a, one of the things that eBPF can make it, um, um, you know, um, Well, so, uh, it's debugging and security tools. So I talk about those things separate, right? You know, one is eBPF makes WASI more secure because eBPF is, uh, um, you know, it is the same it's already do in the container world, right? You know, it's, uh, you have policies that you can use eBPF to filter out pa packets that, you know, that's, uh, you know, uh, that's violate certain security policies. You can do that, the exact same thing with, um, with WASM interface towards the operating system. So, you know, so you can have uh, declarative policies where, you know, um, even more finely grained than, say, um, a WASM's own declarative policy. You know, so it's, uh, it complements, you know, the WASM, deployment, uh, WASM security policy uh, restricts um, what type of eBPF application it can deploy. And the eBPF, when it's running, it can provide runtime and dynamic checks of a lot of those security policies, right? You know, so eBPF makes WASM applications better isolated and, uh, and, uh, uh, and more secure. And on the other hand is that eBPF pro, uh, could provide debugging tracing for the WASM runtime. So, you know, um, not only things that happens, um, you know, because um, a lot of the debugging needs come from, you know, when you interact with other systems, not just, uh, you know, a stack trace of your own, you know, um, uh, function calling stack, but, you know, it's, uh, it's to say, you know, that's um, when you um, call uh, host functions in the system. So for instance, you know, we are using WASM to do uh, AI inference. It's uh, frequently need to call underlying the PyTorch library or the, you know, um, you know, large language model libraries and, you know, things like that. And uh, if the GPU access has a problem, you know, just, you know, to, to you know, 
then it becomes really hard to debug because um, what you see inside the WASM runtime is segmentation fault. You know, that's, uh, so, you know, you, are, you have illegal CPU instructions or you have illegal GPU instructions. You know, that's, uh, um, so, you know, I, I think with ZBPF and you can, you can manage those, um, you, you, can, you can look into those traffic and you can manage those traffic, I think it'd be a lot, um, you know, uh, it'd give a much more compelling developer experience for, um, um, for WebAssembly developers as well. So the main takeaway is that, you know, um, the first that the, the, the WASM container, WASM application is a lightweight way to deploy eBPF on, on, on host in, 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 in Kubernetes, right? It's a, it has the benefits of the both the tight integration and the decoupled approach. You know, in a way, it is, uh, it is tight integration because it's integrated into WASM. However, it is also decoupled from your main workload, right? You know, so it's, uh, um, it's, it's, uh, I think it's a good compromise and it's a good use case of a, of a, light, uh, of a lightweight sandbox like WASM, right? And WASM can use user space eBPF. I thought that was very interesting because that's, users, uh, like we said repeatedly, user space eBPF does not require root access, does not require a, a whole set of security permissions. You know, it allows those, um, you know, applications that doesn't, does not need kernel access to behave much, uh, much more security, uh, much more security and much better, right? And uh, um, then third, eBPF could become part of the WASI implementation, you know, to, to, um, to enhance security, at, uh, to enhance security and traceability, at least in the, in the um, you know, um, um, when WASM is running in the Linux environment, which is, I think, you know, in the cloud, it's maybe 90% of the case, right? So, um, yeah, I think that's, we are right on time, you know, so that's good. You know, um, I, I, I'll go back to put on the uh, link to the project. So, you know, um, we'd really love you guys to check it out. And, uh, you know, if you have um, questions, I think we'll have one minute, you know, so if anyone wants to ask a question.